Welcome back to the band guide. I'm your band guy, Colin. And this is the third and final video in the GarageBand to Logic Bootcamp series where we've gone through everything that you really need to know to make the switch from GarageBand to Logic. In the first video, we covered an overview of all the windows so that you can comfortably and confidently move around inside Logic. In last week's video, we talked about the additional features that you unlock with Logic that you didn't have in GarageBand. And then today we're talking about the tools and the plugins that you get that you didn't have inside GarageBand. Really, really cool, exciting stuff. Number five is crazy stuff. So definitely stick around till the end of this video to check that out. Now, to be clear, this isn't necessarily every new tool and plugin that you get inside Logic. In fact, I'm sure it's not. But in my opinion, it's the five most important, most helpful new tools and plugins that you get. And you don't need to know every single thing that you possibly get inside Logic. You'll discover a lot of them over time. But in my opinion, these are the top five and the five that you'll use the most. Okay, before we get into it, I want to give you something. If you don't have my six step checklist to a pro mix, be sure to download it. It just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how to do them specifically inside logic. It's completely free from the description below. It's already helped out thousands of people. I get emails every day telling me how helpful it is. So I know it's going to help you out with your mixes. So be sure to pick it up. It's really going to help you out. Let's go and jump into logic and look at the top five plugins and tools that you get when you switch from GarageBand. All right, the first new tool that you get with Logic that you didn't have in GarageBand is Flex Pitch. Now, to get to Flex Pitch, you want to hit E on your keyboard to bring up your editor window with your track selected. So I have my vocal lead track selected here. And then you want to click on this little icon right here. This is the Flex icon. We want to turn on Flex, and then we want to switch to Flex Pitch. Now, this will take a second to analyze. It's going to listen through the whole song, analyze all the different notes that you're singing, and then it's going to give you individual control where you can shift and adjust the notes to be exactly what you want them to be. Now, this is not an alternative for getting a good take. If you didn't get a good take, you'd need to re-record your vocals. You need to get as close as you possibly can. But with Flex Pitch, we can go in here and we can find where the notes are and we can see exactly what was sung and we could adjust just a little bit. If you just needed that to be a little bit higher, if you were a little bit flat or maybe you were a little bit sharp, you could actually pull it down with the fine pitch here. You can really get specific and adjust it. If you just double tap on it, it's gonna put it exactly 100% on the nearest note. So you can get really specific and tighten up the tuning of your vocals. This alone is something that makes uh, Logic a huge upgrade from GarageBand because you don't have to get a third party software to do this. Now, this is only one of the two ways that you can tune your vocals in Logic that you couldn't in GarageBand. The second way is with pitch correction. So to bring that up, we'll hit I to bring up our inspector window over here and we'll go under audio effects down to pitch to pitch correction. And pitch correction is technically the same as what's built into GarageBand, but you get a full interface here and you have total control. You can set it to the exact key of the song. You could take out or add in individual notes that you might want. You can get really, really specific and then you get control over the response and tolerance. And this is how you can have it do kind of a T-Pain auto-tune effect. If I make this really, really fast and the tolerance really, really fast, Instead of crying at the table. you can get that kind of T-Pain auto-tune effect. Or if you bring it back to be a little bit slower, it can actually sound at the table. very natural. So flex pitch and pitch correction as a plugin, as opposed to just like one slider that you have access to in GarageBand are much more powerful ways to tune your vocals in Logic. Okay, the second tool that we get in Logic that we didn't have in GarageBand is producer kits. These are producer drum kits, and these are really cool. So to bring these up, select your drum kit and hit Y on the keyboard, and it will bring up your drum kit sound that you currently have selected. But if you scroll all the way down, you'll see producer kits here. And once you click on that, then you have what looks like the same drum kits that you had before, but they all have a plus behind them, and there are a couple additional ones. So let's just say I wanted to start with the SoCal as my initial producer kit. Now, this gives me two things. The first is that it actually breaks out all the individual tracks. So now I can listen to just the overhead sound. I could listen to just the kick in sound. There's no actual kick here playing. I could listen to just the snare top sound. I can get really specific and it breaks it all out for you. I also have a drum room sound that's very realistic that I can mess around with as well, mix in. The second thing that this gives you, if you click on the overhead tracks here, is access to the actual drum kit designer plugin. So I can click on this drum kit designer plugin here, and now I can change out any individual variable of this. So I could listen to my drums, and I could say, what if I had a different snare? What if I changed to this classic chrome? Or maybe this deep maple? Or maybe this heavy brass? And you can find what's the exact right drum kit sound for your song. And you can change out every variable, the kick, the toms, not each individual toms, but a, a series of toms that all sound good together. You can change out the crashes, the ride, the hi-hat. And then let's say you like the sound of the snare, but you just want it to be a little bit higher pitched. 
you can tune it up, you can tune it down. So you get a lot of control over your drum kit sound. And then when it comes to actual mixing, you can go through all the individual elements here and mix them even more specifically. Now, I'm not gonna go any further in this because I've done an entire Make Logic Drum Sound Real series. I'll link to it in the description below here and also a card above here. So definitely check that out. It's amazing how realistic you can make these drums sound. Let's go and move on to the third tool, which is the compressor. Now, the compressor may not sound like an exciting addition, but this is a wildly powerful compressor. And honestly, compression and the built-in compressor in GarageBand, while it technically is the same sound, it is the most limited thing in GarageBand. It's, in my opinion, the worst part about GarageBand. This compressor is extremely powerful and you get access to so much with it. In addition to getting visual feedback of what's actually going on with the compressor, you can see the incoming volume, the outgoing volume, how much compression is being applied here with the meter. You also get this graph function where you can see it visually. You can see how the compressor is limiting or turning down what's going on with the signal. And you get a lot of visual information, control over all the parameters, and you get all of these different models. So each of these different compressor emulations actually sound very different too. So you get very different sounding compressors all in one plugin. You can play around with the different tones, figure out what you think sounds best on what it, whatever it is that you're working on. Or if you wanted to stick to the Platinum Digital, the default, you can use that as your learning compression and getting comfortable with this plugin. So you don't need to get too complicated with this, but it gives you everything that you really need in a compressor. And the fact that this is the stock Logic compressor is wild to me. Now I've done a whole video on how to actually use this compressor. So if you're confused when you see this, definitely check out that video, I'll link to it above and again in the description. So definitely go check that out. But let's go and move on to the fourth tool, which is less of a specific tool and more of just a theme across everything in Logic, and that is more visual feedback in all of your plugins. Now, in GarageBand, you may have noticed that a lot of the plugins look very simplistic. They don't have a lot of visual feedback for you. And I think that's both to make it look a little less intimidating, but I think it's also a little bit of a ploy to encourage you to move up to Logic to get this visual feedback. So we already talked about the compressor and how we can see what's actually going on with this compressor here because of the meter and because of the graph and the input volume and the output volume, all things that are really helpful with compression. There's a lot of different things that I could demonstrate to show this to you, but I think beyond the compressor, the de-esser and the limiter are two great examples of this. So with de which is basically a tool to help address the S's and the harshness of sibilant sounds in the vocals, it is really hard to set if you can't see exactly how much you're doing. And so the GarageBand de is basically just a couple of sliders, but in Logic, we can see exactly where our threshold is set over here on the left. We can see once it crosses it, how much it's turning down, how much the reduction that we're getting is, and basically just get very specific with how we tailor the amount of de we're getting and see exactly how much de we're getting. So we're here, there's a lot of S's, and I can see exactly when it's triggering the de and when it's actually turning it down. So that's really helpful feedback. If you've ever tried to set a de you know it can be kind of confusing. So that's the de The second is the limiter. Now limiting is how you bring up your song to commercial volume. You make sure that it's actually loud enough to stand against other releases. It's one of the ways I should say. But it's a very important part of the mastering process. And the GarageBand limiter, again, is just two sliders. This limiter built into Logic gives you the input volume, the output volume, and it shows you how much reduction is actually happening. So I can see here that I'm only doing a very small amount of reduction. So that cues to me that maybe I could actually turn up a little bit more. Whereas on the alternative side, you could be pushing it way too hard and not even realize it if you're working in GarageBand because you just don't know how much limiting is actually happening. So the visual indicator of the input, the output, and the gain reduction that's happening from the limiter is really, really helpful here in Logic. And again, there's a whole bunch of other examples of this that I could show you. For example, just on the drums here really quickly, all the uh, indicators for the MIDI show you exactly the velocity based on the color of the individual notes. They also tell you exactly what each thing is over here on the left, which is something I think they intentionally left out of GarageBand to make it a little bit trickier to use. So all this visual feedback is really helpful, it makes it a lot easier to work in Logic than it is in some ways to work in GarageBand. And finally, we have the Mastering Assistant. Now, this is kind of crazy that they include this in Logic. This is a brand new feature in Logic with the newest update. So if you have Logic and you haven't updated, 
You do have to update your operating system to get this, but in my opinion, it's worth it. This is a really cool, very powerful tool that gives you basically AI mastering built into logic. I've done a whole video where I walk through using this that I'll link to above here, but basically with the click of one button, you can take your mix from an unmastered mix like this to a mastered mix. This is a final mix that you can go upload. And it gives you the ability to go in and tweak some of these parameters. I can add a little bit more bass, maybe bring in some of this mid-range that it cut. I could scale the EQ that it sets up or down. I get a lot of control over it that really allows this to be a pretty powerful mastering tool that in my opinion is more useful and better sounding than most AI mastering that you have to pay for. And you get this for free in Logic. And beyond that, it's a great way to learn mastering because I can see what's going on here and I could reverse engineer it and do it myself to really understand the mastering process. And in my opinion, I'm still able to create a better master, at least for what I'm looking for out of the mastering process. But there's still things that I can learn from this. So it's kind of like having a second person master your song from you that you can watch how they do it and steal the tricks of it inside your mix. So it's very, very powerful, very cool that they included this. And again, it's the newest feature in the newest version of Logic, so you will have to update to get it. But in my opinion, it's worth it. So that's the Mastering Assistant. Again, it's kind of insane that they include this for free. Definitely go check out that video. I'll link to it above here and down in the description below where I talk about how to really use this Mastering Assistant a little bit more. It's really gonna help you out. But before you go, be sure to grab my six-step checklist to a Pro Mix. At the end of the day, the Mastering Assistant, all these other features are all cool, but they're not the fundamental component of a great sounding song. That has to do with the full mixing process. So be sure to grab it from the link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. It just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have. So be sure to grab it. Before you go, I'd love to hear from you. Are there any features that you have questions about using inside Logic? I could do a follow-up FAQ or just an additional video on it. So let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you wanna see specific to Logic coming over from GarageBand or just getting going with Logic. I'd love to help you out with it. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video.